Hello, I'm the Rico GXR and I'm a freak of a camera. I'm a hideous monster unlike any camera you've ever seen before. <laughs> okay, silly voices aside, I am Blunty and this is indeed the Rico GXR. And it is a bit of a freak of a camera because this isn't a fixed lens camera. This isn't an interchangeable lens camera. It's what Rico would like to call an interchangeable unit camera. Check this out. Shabam. Look at that. The entire lens system and sensor unit is interchangeable. While the body just sits there, sort of a shell and a bit of a brain and all your buttons and your viewfinder and everything sit there. So what this actually, the benefit of this is actually you can get a whole range of different camera options, not just lens options and not just different cameras with different sensors, but you switch out the both at the same time, which gives you a huge amount of power and flexibility to not only stay with the times, you know, you can upgrade your sensor as you go along and get a better, better, better camera without changing your body out. So everything you like about the body remains the same and all your muscle memory remains the same, all your controls remain in the same places. You don't have to learn a new camera. You don't have to get used to new ergonomics or anything like that. And you just switch them out. And you can also get, uh, sensor units with lens mounts on them so you can use it with uh, different types of lens interchangeable lenses on it as well it's a very interesting very bizarre and entirely unique camera system but today i'm going to be looking at this uh, interchangeable unit thingy which is the uh, rico a16 which is their newest unit for the gxr system and it is the first with a APS-C size sensor and a zoom lens. But if it's a zoom lens, where's the bloody zoom ring? It's a solid chunk of, of, of metal there. Well, how am I supposed to zoom? Well, it's all electronic, actually, which is a bit kooky and a bit tough to get used to. But see, there we go. Just by your little rocker switch there, which is very, very unusual and honestly took me a while to get used to. I'm used to going, where's my focus, where's my zoom? But no, it's all done via the body electronically. And the body is fairly standard sort of layout for a camera. You've got power and shutter and your little adjustment knob up there and your mode dial there and your bunch of controls over here. Nothing really spectacular or standout there. The screen is quite nice. Again, not spectacular, not crappy, but it did the job really nicely. And as you can see, the little level bouncing around there, which is also very handy to have. But yeah, I'm more interested in how the lens unit, or, uh, the sensor and lens unit, so I'm not even used to talking about cameras in these terms with interchangeable units. It's really weird. But yeah, so let's have a look at see how this actually performs in the wild. The A16 provides a restrained but very useful zoom range of 3.5 times, starting at a pleasant wide of 24mm and pushing out to 85mm, which makes for a very practical walking around setup. The lens configuration itself has been constructed to give good contrast, control distortion and of course give fine sharpness. And its nine rounded aperture blades give you a very pleasant bokeh in the background blur too. It is not the fastest lens you'll find, living at f3.5 to f5.5, but the lens and sensor have been paired up to work very well together nicely, so I didn't ever really hit a point where I felt like I needed more. The APS-C sensor itself in the A16 unit, as the numeral name notifies, is a 16 megapixel chip, which is a very nice sweet spot between high resolution and high sensitivity. As the sun went down, I discovered that the low light performance was very encouraging indeed, retaining a lot of detail and keeping sensor noise well under control. As a matter of fact, its performance was so good, every one of these low light shots was accomplished without a tripod or any other such support gear a smart snapper would normally reach for in these conditions. Which means when you're out shooting with this setup, you can afford to travel extra light and leave some of the heavier gear at home, which is always welcome in my book. And of course alongside the auto and semi-auto modes you can take full manual control over ISO, aperture and shutter speeds so you can properly explore a range of styles and effects to your heart's content. It doesn't have a true macro mode but macro-ish kind of shots can be achieved and they look quite nice even if I do say so myself. Sadly, after the exciting performance in stills mode, when it comes to its movie mode, it's a bit of a letdown. Topping out at just 720p is a bit sad these days, and the image quality in video is uninspiring, feeling a bit flat and quite lifeless. 
Most damning of all, though, is that inexplicably and infuriatingly, it can't actually use any of that wonderful optical zoom range in video mode. As soon as you press the record button, your focal length is stuck. Dead. Instead, it pukes up a hideous four times digital zoom, which villainously and brutally assaults image quality the instant you so much as consider reaching for the zoom button. Low light performance in video is equally disappointing, perhaps more so after it excelled so well in these conditions in stills mode. So, locked focal range, limited resolution, decidedly ordinary image, and a useless in low light. Yeah, the video mode is all but useless outside of the Happy Snap family moments when it's the only camera to hand. The onboard microphone does do a decent job though, and for that kind of environmental shooting, it's fine. It's sad to have the video mode be such a letdown, but frankly, the stills mode is so nice, I don't consider it to necessarily be a deal breaker. I just started to think of the GXR with the A16 as a stills only camera, and I became a very happy camper indeed. And sure, the Ricoh GXR is a little bit bizarre in its concept, but it does work very well. And while its quirkiness means you might not run into them very often, I can tell you this, every owner I've ever spoken to, or even come across online in forums and whatnot, bloody loves the thing. Owners swear by them. And I think the A16 unit will be very warmly welcomed indeed by owners and new buyers alike. Overall, I really, really liked it. It's not very good in video like we just discussed, but if you're more about the stills than the moving pictures, then this is a really nice option for your GXR unit, or if you're looking into the GXR, it's a really nice way to start off because it gives you a lot of power very quickly, really nice images, nice big sensor, and a very flexible zoom range in a really nice lens setup. And as for the camera body itself, well, I quite like the ergonomics of it. It uh, it feels really nice in the hand. You've got this rubbery bit here, which sort of, it's a nice secure grip, another piece of rubber near your thumb, and uh, I used it the entire time without a strap or a wrist strap or anything like that and felt entirely secure with it. And uh, yeah, I really actually quite liked how the Ricoh GXR handled, particularly with the A16 unit. So if you are living in this world, it's worth a look at. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.